Hi, I'm Midnight Mule and I have a question for you. Do you ever look at the night sky and look at the stars and wonder, I wonder whereabouts the throne of God is? Where's Jehovah sitting? Well, tonight I want to look at that and see what the Watchtower have said about this in the past. But before I start, I need to give the normal copyright notice because I'm looking at other people's material. I'm getting stuff from Wikipedia, some from Watchtower books albeit all quite old and some from the Watchtower website. So all the material I'm referencing uh, is for legitimate reasons for criticism, comment, reporting, etc, etc. So where to start? Well, as I mentioned before, I bought some books, some of the originals, because Jehovah's Witness will only consider looking at anything if I have the original. And I bought this one, Thy Kingdom Come, because I was aware it had a chapter on the pyramids. Now this particular book, the original edition, was written in 1891. Um, if I just look at the cover of mine to start with, you'll see there's a the sun disc here. Now there'll be some websites you can look at and they'll tell you about the history of this symbol and what it means, etc. I'm not going to go into any of that apart from to highlight it and say I'm not going to go into that. But if you've got a lot of time or it's of interest to you, you may want to try and find for yourself what the history of that symbol is. Anyway, one day I was in the garden one Sunday and I was reading chapter 10 because that's the um, that's the interesting chapter which is all about the pyramid. So, uh, study 10, the testimony of God's stone witness and prophet, the Great Pyramid in Egypt. It was Charles Taze Russell's belief that the pyramids had an awful lot to say about Bible prophecy. Uh, it's, it's called pyramidology, that whole side of things. Now, he didn't start this. In this particular book, it talks about Reverend Joseph Sice. I don't know if I'm saying his word right. That's from Thy Kingdom Come, copyright 1891. I have the 1913 edition, but I'm not aware of there being any significant changes in that time. And what I'll be showing you is from pages 327 and 328. Now this Reverend Joseph Sice, here he is on Wikipedia. He was an American theologian and Lutheran minister, and he was known for his religious writings on pyramidology and dispensationalism. And on the Wikipedia page itself, it talks about his most well-known work, The Great Pyramid of Egypt, Miracle in Stone. And he wrote this in 1877. That was two years before Russell started his club, or his group, whatever you want to call it, his organisation. And Russell built on his work and lots of other people's works when he was forming his opinions about the Bible. Uh, so here it says... Sice is typically cited among less than a dozen theologians who influenced Charles Taze Russell. So Charles Taze Russell was influenced by other people heavily and what the other people thought about different things. Now, if you read Watchtower literature and listen to what the governing body, etc. say, they will want you to believe that these early Bible students spent a lot of time looking at the Bible, reading it, studying it and finding out truths in the Bible. I don't think the evidence supports that. When you read their material, what you'll find is they built their ideas on other people's ideas that came before them, and they looked at the Bible and tried to make the Bible verses fit their ideas or the ideas of other people. So that's one of the reasons why I think we can say they weren't studying the Bible, they were studying other people's ideas and trying to ram the scriptures into it. The other reason why we can say they weren't studying the Bible was nearly everything they've written has now been discarded. The reason it's been discarded is it was plainly wrong and the Watchtower Society can't possibly support their writings because they were strange, I guess you could say. So this is on page 327-328. Astronomers are not yet fully agreed as to what or where that centre is. This is talking about the centre of the universe and these are the writings of Joseph Seiss. Some, however, believe that they have found the direction of it to be the Pleiades, and particularly Alcyon, the central one of the renowned Pleiadic stars. So, this is 
Charles Taze Russell, in his book about the pyramids, he quotes two or three paragraphs from Joseph Sice. So he obviously agrees and likes with what he's saying here. So first off, what are the Pleiades? Well, if we go to Wikipedia, we'll find out here. It's also known as the Seven Sisters, Messier 45. There's a colour composite images image here of the Pleiades. And here it is zoomed up a bit. I don't know if you have binoculars, if you can see anything like that. I don't know enough about astronomy to know what you can and can't see. But anyway, this is the Pleiadic system. Now, if we go back to uh, the book here, it says, Alcyon then, as far as science has been able to perceive, would seem to be the midnight throne in which the whole system of gravitation has its central seat and from which the Almighty governs his universe. So Joseph Seiss said it's the midnight throne where the Almighty governs his universe, and Charles Taze Russell had this information in his book on the studies in the scriptures, which was Thy Kingdom Come. Now, the next book I want to look at, so that was, that was Charles Taze Russell. Next in line was Judge Rutherford. He liked to call himself Judge. And I want to refer to the book Creation. This is from 1927. And you can't probably see this nice embossed cover here. So I'll just show you it. They, the presentation of some of the books and drawings actually very nice. So I think that's supposed to be, I don't know if that's some sort of galaxy or Milky Way forming uh, for creation. And I want to look at this particular sentence here, which is on page 94. The face of the deep, of course, would be toward the Pleiades, which are claimed to be the habitation of Jehovah. So here Rutherford acknowledges the link with Pleiades and the throne of Jehovah. In this book, to be fair, he's not actually saying it is the throne. He's just saying, clearly recognising that there's a link there. Now the next book I want to look at from Rutherford is from... 1928 I think I'm going to say um, there it is it's reconciliation it's called anyway Nin 1928 reconciliation and again you can't see the light here so I'll bring it in and on the front is an image of a naked embossed man looking up at the sky and there's sunlight or something coming down now I've I don't know why Rutherford liked to put on naked men here's another one this is a picture of the golden age and if i just um show you that picture a bit more clearly there it is naked man again looking at sunlight that's just something rutherford like to do i don't know the reason behind it maybe it's artistic anyway in this book this is on reconciliation page 14 it says the constellation of the seven stars forming the pleiades appears to be the crowning centre around which the known system of the planets revolve, even as our sun's planets obey the sun and travel in their respective orbit, orbits. Here's the interesting part. It has been suggested, and with much weight, i.e. he agrees it's very plausible, that one of the stars of that group is the dwelling place of Jehovah and the place of the highest heavens. And then further down on the same page, the constellation of the Pleiades is a small one compared to, compared with others which scientific instruments disclose to the wandering eyes of man. But the greatness in size of other stars or planets is small when compared with the Pleiades in importance because the Pleiades is the place of the eternal throne of God. And I want to repeat that last sentence. Pleiades is the place of the eternal throne of God is he said it is now are we to believe this well if we look at the foreword of that reconciliation book the contents of this book are a statement of the facts as they exist and the citation of the scriptures in support thereof so what the um people who were part of the jehovah's witnesses at the time they would have had this book they would have had this naked man book they would have known from the front, the foreword, that it's facts. And from the facts, they would have known that the throne of Jehovah is in the Pleiades system. Now, just to give a bit of balance to this, in 19, 
53 and I've not got the original so I've had to go to the Watchtower website so you'll be able to find this as well. There's a question from the readers regarding the Pleiades and Orion and to do with where it's mentioned in Job. And in their response the Watchtower is saying incidentally Pleiades can no longer be considered the centre of the universe which is true scientists don't say that anymore and it would be unwise for us to try and fix God's throne as being at a particular spot in the universe. Were we to think of the Pleiades as his throne, we might improperly view with special veneration that cluster of stars. Now they're not saying that is not his throne. They're simply saying it would be unwise for us to try and fix God's throne as being at a particular point. So they didn't, they weren't being too sure or dogmatic about it. So is Jehovah's throne somewhere here? If you're alive a hundred years ago and you're part of the Watchtower Society, then you would know as a fact that somewhere in this cluster is the throne of Jehovah. If you're Jehovah's Witness today and you look there, you might think well, it's unwise to think it's there. Is it or not? I'm, I'm not going to cast an opinion. All I'm doing is looking at what's actually written. If you found any of that interesting, I'd be very happy to read your comments about this. If you've got more information on this, that'd be great as well. Any likes and subscribes are good. And I hope to see you again another time.